Hey everyone, today we're going to be going over reading mass spectrometry graphs. Okay, so basically what we're doing in this is we're taking a molecule and we're shooting a beam of light at it and it breaks it up into a whole bunch of different fragments. Now you have to remember, when we fragment it up, though, some fragments are going to become positively charged cations and the other part may just become neutral uh, fragments, so they don't have a charge at all. But the mass spectrum graph only picks up on charged cations, okay? So anytime you see a peak or anything like that in the mass spectrum graphs, you have to remember that that fragment that it's talking about is a positively charged cation, okay? So this one, the mass spectrum graphs are pretty useful for figuring out the basically the molecular weight of the entire molecule and the molecular weight of some of its fragments and some patterns you can kind of pick on on so let's go through an example here so here's a mass spectrum graph of a random molecule so right off the bat what could we tell from this molecule if you weren't given anything else well there's a couple things that we can see first of all the the most notice, noticeable peak on the right hand side this one around 121 this one around 121 is going to be our molecular ion peak okay yeah this one's good that's going to be our molecular ion peak so what we want to do that's going to be our molecular ion peak so this describes the parent molecule. Basically what we do is we take the parent molecule and we take an electron away. And since electrons weigh basically nothing, it doesn't really change the molecular weight that much. But since we took an electron away, it becomes a positive cation. And since mass spectrum graphs read positively charged fragments, it will pick up on it. So the first piece of information we know is that our parent molecule, whatever it is, it has a structure that adds up to 121 grams per mole. Okay. So this one's 100, 121. Okay. What else do we know? Well, here is the base peak over here. Now this one's at 100% relative intensity. What this means is this is the most common uh, fragment that basically appears every time. And this is right around... 105. Okay, so this tall one is going to be right around 105. So we're going to find out what that is. And then what else do we want to figure out? Well, what if we were asked about this one over here? This one's right around 77, right? And since these are all just positive 1 uh, for the charge, which is Z, you can just think of these as the molecular weights. So this particular fragment has a molecular weight of 77 grams per mole. And then how about we look at this final one over here. So this one, we'll look at this one. We'll look at this one over here. This one's going to be right around 51 grams per mole. Okay. So if you were asked about these peaks, would you be able to label it? Well, first of all, let me give you the chemical formula of the entire molecule. So you'd either be given other graphs to help you figure this out, or you would be given it off the bat and just be asked to label its fragments. So luckily for you guys, I'm going to give you it. And if we come over here, zoom out. There it is right here. So I've actually given you the parent molecule, which is just benzamide right here. So, this benzamide has a chemical formula of C7H7, then a nitrogen, and an oxygen, okay? So, it has seven carbons, seven hydrogens, one nitrogen, and one oxygen. Now, actually, another peaceful useful piece of advice is looking at the values themselves. So 121 for our molecular ion peak tells us that basically our parent molecule has 
a molecular weight of 121 grams per mole. So since this number is odd, 121, tells us that we likely have an odd number of nitrogens. So we either have one nitrogen, three nitrogens, five nitrogens, or whatever, an odd number of nitrogens, okay? And it makes sense that we have one nitrogen here, so that adds up. And then something else that is really quite useful is looking at the common fragments, so the big peaks. So we have a common fragment that appears at 77 grams per mole and 51 grams per mole. Now this is characteristic of a benzene ring. So anytime you see these peaks at 77 and 51, your structure probably has a benzene ring. And as you can see, there it is right there. Okay. So if you were given this uh, formula and you were asked, okay, what is the structures or the formulas of each of these little peaks? So in what way am I breaking this parent molecule up to get these different peaks? Well, let's go through it one by one and see what we mean. So remember, with our molecular ion peak, uh, what we do is basically we're just taking our parent molecule, removing an electron, which doesn't really change the weight, and just turns the parent molecule into a positive cation. So what we basically do is we just take the thing and add a plus charge to it. Because remember, mass spectrum graphs only pick up on positively charged cations. So we know the fragment at 121 is just the parent peak, but with a charge. So it's C7, H7, N, O, and remember it's positively charged, so plus, okay, for the whole thing. Now we have another peak at 105. So how can I break this up to get positively charged fragment at 105? Well, how about we break it off at this bond right here? So if I broke this up over over here, okay? So we have this side, if it became a positively charged fragment, and this side, okay? So basically find the molecular weights of each side if they happen to become fragments. So if we split it up over here, and this side happened to become our positively charged cation, then this fragment would have a molecular weight of 14 plus 2, because it's NH2, of 16. Okay? And that means the other side would be basically you can do the parent minus or the molecular ion peak minus 16, which adds up to 105. Or you could add up um, all these carbons, all these hydrogens, and the oxygen and see what that would give you. And it should still give you 105. So we know that this is actually one of our fragments. So we fragment it over here, and this left side happened to become um, one of our fragments, which gave us 105. Okay? So what's actually the chemical formula of this side? Well, it would be C7H. We still have the oxygen with us, and remember it's a positive charge cation, so it's a plus, okay? And you can actually try this for yourself, 7 times 12 plus 5 plus 16 gives us 105, so we know that this fragment is correct. Nice. Now what else can we get? So we fragmented it there. Where else can we fragment it? How about we fragment it hmm, at this one right here? Okay, we have the top side and the bottom side. What would each of these fragments give us? Well, if we fragmented the top side and this became the positively charged cation, we would have 16 plus 14 plus 2 plus our carbon with no hydrogen, so it's just 12, 44. So the top would be 44. And that means our bottom would have to be 77. Okay? 
And remember, we talked about how 77 uh, usually indicates that we have a benzene ring. Well, this is actually it right here. It's basically what we, we just fragmented it and the benzene ring happened to become the positively charged cation. So what is this one? Well, this one, the benzene ring, this would be C6, H5 plus. Right? And if you actually counted it up, it would make sense, right? We have six carbons times 12 plus five gives us 77 positive charge cation. So that's good. And it's always a good idea to check your work. So that works out. How about this last one over here? Well, this one's kind of a weird one where we fragmented it at 41. So one of the ways you can get, or sorry, fragmented it and the positive one became 51. One of the ways you can get that is by getting four carbons. So C4 and three hydrogens, which that will give you 51. Remember, it's positively charged cation. And basically how we do it was, we kind of just fragment it over here. Now this was a little bit confusing, but the chemical formula still makes sense. So we have one, two, three, four carbons and three hydrogens. So just remember that for 51, okay? So basically all we do is we just take our, our chemical structure and our chemical formula and we fragment it up and we try to get to these fragments, okay? So whatever our thing is, it has to add up to that fragment. So in this one, pretty much the whole thing became the fragment and it became positive. So that's 121. This one adds up to 105 and it's positive. This one adds up to 77 and it's positive. This one adds up to 51 and it's positive, okay? Remember, positively charged cations only. And this is how we fragmented it. So this kind of little bits of the puzzle over here for our mass spectrum. Okay, thanks for watching.